All right. Good evening, everyone. 10 Tampa Bay Chief Meteorologist Bobby Deskins here. It is, obviously, as you can see here, just about 930 on our Thursday evening. And of course, wanted to get you updated on what could be tropical storm, at least Idalia, uh, over the next couple of days. This wave that we're watching down in the Western Caribbean right now. So let's let's just dive right in. Here we go. This is the wave now. It was actually down here. You can kind of see part of this moisture here coming in on shore for Honduras and Nicaragua. And it's starting to be coming, moving out here into the Western Caribbean. And that's what we expect to happen right in this area here. And then gradually, when you get up here, the tip of Yucatan here, Western tip of Cuba, right in this area here, I think we could see a little bit of organization starting as we get into Saturday and into Sunday night, or Saturday night into Sunday morning, I should say. And then eventually, all of this would be drifting off uh, to the north and headed in our direction here from Tampa area. Uh, there's Franklin over here. You can see Franklin's track moving off to the north, northwest of that. Well, northeast now to north, northwest. But you see the twos? That's a forecast calling for a Cat 2 hurricane out of that. Now, let's uh, let's talk about that. Let me get you. Let's just go right over to the models here. Uh, and let's start with the Hurricane Center and what they're thinking as far as uh the numbers. So, so right now they've got a 20% chance the next two days, but it's up to a 70% chance of developing basically Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. All right. So they're looking at a pretty good chance that this thing develops. Now the European model is the one that has been developing. And you can see that here. This is Tuesday evening at sunset. That's around 8 p.m. or so. Let me back it up here. Let's go out here to... Uh, Let's go out to Saturday, Friday night. Still all this moisture down in here, right? Then notice, see that little circle that was there? See the low forming, 1,006 millibars? This is Saturday evening, Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. So it's starting to take shape right there. At least that's what the, the model's seeing, right? Now, slowly, this is going to eventually start drifting to the north. Now, look what's happening with Franklin. Franklin's intensifying as it moves to the north. So this thing's kind of blowing up a little bit. At the same time, the GF, the European, excuse me, is seeing this starting to organize just a little bit and drift off towards the north. This is Monday evening, really technically Tuesday morning. That's Tuesday morning sunrise. And look at that. Uh, 998, that's a tropical storm, right? This is what we're watching, right? That, that's just a tropical storm, but you know, it, it's hard to say what it would be. It's too far out in time. But what you need to notice is that it's not too organized down here, and it looks like it's strengthening as it moves to the north. And so this time of year, this warm water, you have to watch for strengthening that can happen pretty quickly, rapid intensification. But right now, the, the forecast model is basically saying uh, 980 plus millibars. In fact, 992, I think, is one of the lowest. Uh, what do we have here? Yeah. So uh, this is 11 p.m. Tuesday. And that is a southwest wind coming into the bay. So a little bit of a surge issue there. And then going up towards the big bend. All right. Now, what I want to do here over the next couple of days is just kind of keep showing you model runs because this is all going to change. Having said that, the, the European is actually fairly consistent over the last two to three long range runs now. So let me back up. This is Sunday afternoon, three o'clock. Let's go into Monday morning, 8 a.m. Still looking good. Tuesday, uh, Monday afternoon or evening, that's 8 p.m. Starting to see some breeze. And look what's happening down here to the south. You see that? That is the system starting to take shape and coming north. So <clears throat> by the time we get to Tuesday morning, 11 a.m., look what we got here. Right? Those reds right there are basically winds in the 40s. About 40, 45 mile per hour winds. Right? That's Tuesday, 11 a.m., and then watch as we go through Tuesday night, 11 p.m. Now, some of those darker colors are around 50 mile per hour winds right here. And that's a south to southwest wind. That's a little bit of a surge for us. Now, 50 mile per hour is not a lot of wind, but I have no idea if this is exactly what it's going to be. In fact, I would doubt that this is exactly what it's going to look like. So track is one thing. We're starting to, at least at this point, get a little bit more confidence that something may develop up to 70% chance from the Hurricane Center, right? track is starting to be more and more consistent in this area intensity is one of the hardest things to forecast anyways 
And I don't trust it a whole lot. But what I will say about that is that most of what I'm seeing is weaker or at least sub hurricane, meaning this would be a tropical storm trying to come on shore. All right. So again, you're looking at 11 p.m. Tuesday right here. And this timing will change a little bit. In fact, it has changed a little bit. It's a little bit slower. Uh, this is 8 a.m. on Wednesday. The system's up near the Big Bend, Levy County. The center is. Still onshore winds for the nature coast, 20s and 30s, gusts of the 40s. And then it jumps out over Jacksonville and it comes up. Look at that. So this is Wednesday at 8 p.m. Look at the Carolinas. Charleston, basically moving offshore. The highest winds will stay offshore, but they'll get a little, little nor'easter type set situation. Not, nothing terrible if that holds. All right, let's go over to the GFS. I'm not going to take a whole lot of time tonight, but I just wanted to kind of get this going so we can compare models for my next video. Uh, here is... Let me back up here. Here's Saturday at 11 in the morning. Yeah, see, it's got something down here, right? Nothing organized. Let's go out to Sunday morning, 8 a.m. Still something down here, trying to close a low. Very broad area of low pressure. Certainly nothing organized like what, you know, Sunday morning on the, on the Euro European looks like. Now let's go out to Monday, 8 a.m., Franklin's developing. You can see that. It's got nothing down here. I mean, the 1,008 closed low there, nothing. Nothing at all. It would eject some moisture our way, but it just doesn't see this happening. And then you can see by the time we get out towards, let's go Monday night at 11 p.m., the moisture's moving across Cuba, across the Florida Straits, the Bahamas. So it's more to the south and east. It's got more of a frontal boundary up to our north. There's a big trough coming down up here, uh, down through the central and eastern U.S., and that's going to help pull this thing to the north. Where is the key? But look, this is Tuesday, 11 a.m., Tuesday, 5 p.m., Tuesday, 8 p.m. But you remember that Tuesday, 8 and 11 p.m., we had this system right off our coast for the European. This has nothing. This has got this just tropical moisture coming up, central and especially south Florida, Tuesday, Tuesday night, and Wednesday. All right, so it doesn't have anything. See that? That's a frontal boundary just come through. Just off the Carolinas all the way down through Texas. That's a frontal boundary. So it, it's seen something different here altogether. Uh, as far as winds, it's seen a southwest flow ahead of that frontal boundary. You see there's north to northwest winds here in Georgia, uh, Mississippi, Alabama. Um, that's a frontal boundary there. It's a weak one. It's not going to get all the way through here, but it's seeing a good surge of south to southwest winds ahead of that, which makes sense. Uh, I, I, I got to be honest, I'm leaning towards the European, not this GFS model. Now, bigger picture, you see the green up here where I've got this? That indicates lift in the atmosphere. And this goes out through, let's see, this is the 29th of August, the second one right here. You go out through the 3rd of September. See the green is still there. And then you get out towards the 8th of September and the green's starting to fade and you've got this yellow coming. The green is lift in the atmosphere. So you remember a week ago, we had four systems pop at the same time. I think that's what's gonna happen here, but it will just be these two. This is Franklin on the right-hand side here. Franklin, we already know, is starting to intensify a little bit, but it's forecast to continue and go up. What you're looking at here is the probability of tropical storm force winds, right? And so we see one popping here and going to the north. Why wouldn't we see another one popping here and going to the north? There's a bunch of different reasons why, but th just the overall pattern makes more sense to me that this would be bigger than what the GFS has. Here's the GFS, same thing, probability of tropical storm force winds, right? It just doesn't see it at all. It, it clearly sees Franklin, but it doesn't see anything coming up in our direction. Uh, now let's talk ensemble. So what you're looking at here is the European model run a bunch of different times. I'll back it up a little bit, see the lows. Every one of those lows is a different one. There's another way to look at it. Look at all these circles. Watch what happens. This is 8 a.m. Monday morning. 8 a.m. Tuesday morning. I'll go to 8 a.m. Wednesday morning. So this is the European model with a bunch of different runs. It's got a low as far west as the central Gulf of Mexico, and it's got another one that's already off of Jacksonville and a whole lot in between, right? You can see the spread that is still there. So timing-wise, yeah, we're getting a little bit better. You know, we're thinking Tuesday time frame, kind of, kind of for the impacts. Tuesday, Tuesday night now is a little bit lower, slower. But exactly where, I mean, look at the spread in just the European model alone. And this is the one that is telling us that it's going to be more of a storm system, right? Let's look at the GFS. The GFS, 
and you're actually looking basically at the same time. There's just nothing to show you. Watch Franklin on the right hand side. See it deepening, right? And there's nothing. And let me go and look at the, the different low locations here. You don't see anything. This is Sunday morning, Sunday night. You see it trying to look at this. This is Monday at 8 a.m. It's trying to sniff out something there. And a lot of these low pressures are kind of typical there for this time of year. It's a little gyre that sits down there. Uh, this is Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Barely anything, right? Nothing really. I mean, just nothing. So the GFS is either way out to lunch or it's on to something. But I think the European is probably on to something. And again, I go back to, to this right here. Um, just like what we saw, you know, if you remember last week, we saw all four of those within about a 24 to 36 hour period. We had four different systems uh, develop. And that's because the atmosphere is primed and ready to go. And that's how the atmosphere tends to work. We're seeing a repeat of that right now through the European model, but it's only a couple of them, right? In fact, actually, let me show you the Atlantic Basin. There is more. It's kind of doing the same thing, right? So obviously that's Franklin there by Hispaniola, but watch what happens through the next seven to eight, nine days, right? So it's starting to see things pop up. Again, this is the probability that we see tropical storm force winds. So again, overall, that's that's my thinking at this particular point. I do think we need to be prepared for potential weather. And I would be prepared by Monday evening, but we're going to know a whole lot more. The problem with this one is going to be is that we're likely going to get some kind of maybe potential tropical cyclone, maybe even a depression over the weekend. And I'm talking Saturday night or during the day on Sunday. And once that happens, we're going to get a cone. And this has happened on the weekend. A lot of folks aren't paying attention. I mean, a lot of folks now know like, hey, we need to kind of pay attention to this, right? Uh, because it is something that looks like could be happening. Uh, but I just want you to stay weather aware as we go through the upcoming weekend and, and have plans just in case for Tuesday and Wednesday timeframe uh, to have some weather coming through the area. So that's it right now. Don't forget all of my platforms. You got me on uh, YouTube, you got me on Instagram, you got me on X. Uh, so search me up all over there and of course on Facebook. Uh, I'll keep updating these. Please like and subscribe if you're on my YouTube and share this with your friends so that anytime uh, I, I do an update, you'll get the latest model runs. And that's what I wanted to do today. It's kind of lay out where we're at with the model runs. I'll basically leave this setup very similar. And as model runs come in, I'll be updating you uh, tomorrow during the day and we can see the changes as it goes. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great rest of your evening.